Hi, I'm Joni Petrie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I want to talk about a moon in Gemini, all that you can know about a moon in Gemini. Now I'm going to be talking about the three different portions of the sign of Gemini that reflects and gives such deep meaning to the nakshatras because there's three nakshatras contained in the moon when it's in Gemini. So another thing I want to explain is wherever your moon is, is what's going to start your entire life cycles. This is based on the dashas. The dashas start with the nakshatra, what, wherever your moon is, what nakshatra your moon is in, the planet that rules that nakshatra, starts your whole life cycles. So we're going to talk about that in great detail as well. But before I start, I want to remind everyone to sign up for my free newsletter where you can have all of my predictions, monthly predictions delivered to your email address. So go to galacticcenter.org and remember while you're there to check out my beautiful spiritual jewelry where I have prayer malas and earrings. And if you would like to learn Vedic astrology with me, check out my university. That is universityofvedicastrology.com. Now let's talk more in depth about the moon if you have the moon in Gemini. What is Gemini all about? Gemini is all about communications, speaking, talking, thinking, always in a thought process. Cognitively, people with the moon in Gemini are an overload. They never stop thinking. And since the mind is so active, they're incredibly bright, intelligent, and quick-witted, I must add, because Mercury is the planet that rules Gemini. And Mercury is all about humor, quick-wittedness, learning, education, traveling. Somebody with the moon in Gemini would never dream of, not, of going somewhere without something to read, looking at a book, looking at their phone. Their mind has to be in action. And don't forget, Mercury is the planet that rules youthfulness. And in Greek mythology, Mercury, or Hermes, as, as we call in, in Greek mythology, is the messenger. And Hermes is seen to have the wings on his feet because he was the only god that could travel to the underworld where Pluto was and leave. Remember, this is the place of death. But Mercury could travel to the underworld and come out. I believe it's because Mercury rules how we process thoughts, our mind, our thinking mind. Therefore, our mind can go anywhere. And it does. Mercury also is the god that deals with with thinking and traveling, but it is so much into education. It's relative to the third house, the third sign Gemini. Third house deals with how we learn our education and also always on the go, always traveling. This is the sign that is the most curious about things. Always think out thinking outside the box, but open-minded, so curious, Does, doesn't have a closed mind. Mercury's fast, and it means people that have a sharp, sharp intellect. And also Mercury is androgynous. It's like a Peter Pan, can go either way in terms of pretty much when someone is young before they go through puberty. So Mercury really represents this youthfulness and being young, whether it's physically looking young or being physically or being mentally young, always connecting to younger generations. This is what a moon in Gemini can do for people. Now let's talk about the nakshatras. So if your moon is from zero degrees of Gemini to six degrees 40 of Gemini, then you have your moon in the nakshatra Marigashira, 
which is the star of searching. It's the star that deals with always looking for something. The symbol is the deer, which deals with the antelope, the deer that hunts, that travels, that moves fast. And to go into the, the lore of the stars, which is so vitally important to the nakshatras, they're really based on the meanings of the stars. Then we are looking at this deep-seated aspect that can deal with Orion. This portion of the zodiac is dealing with Orion, uh, the whole most of Gemini, and and it actually goes into the 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 latter parts go into the twins, which were Castor and Pollux. Those stars are within the whole sign of Gemini. But I'm going to back up and talk about the mythology about Marigashira. It's actually kind of a dark mythology, if I could put it this way, because what it's all about is this antelope that's searching and searching, and it is... Prajapati, which is the god of the, the, that made the world, the world maker, Prajapati. But Prajapati became obsessed with his daughter, Rohini, and was following through, charging through to, to catch his daughter. But Shiva got wind of this and shot with an arrow Prajapati, who was in the form of the antelope, but fell to the ground and destroyed the unity of the world. This was a big, big shakeup. But just to make it more simpler, this kind of thing can be searching and searching and going on a quest for things. And some of it could be a sexual connotation because of the mythology. But I find most of the time it's, it's usually about people that are always searching for something. And you could look at that as searching for spirituality, searching for truth. And even people with this nakshatra, they love to collect things. They're always looking to complete their collection, whether it be a collection of stamps, of coins, of watches. They have that one more piece to complete their collection. But once they find that last piece, then the fun's over because the fun to them is in the, the hunt, the search. And it's interesting how this has been even been made reference to uh, with Princess Diana uh, being the one that was searched for all the time. But getting back to this particular part, because what you're going to find is Marigashira, this portion, the first, and it's basically the first six degrees, 40 minutes of Gemini. It's ruled by what? Mars. Mars is so fiery. So the people with this, they have a fiery temperament and they're always searching for things. And it also means they started their whole life cycle out in the Mars Mahadasha since Marigashira is ruled by Mars. Moon in Marigashira. And look at this. This means their life starts out with sudden events, things are happening quickly. They may even be born through a C-section. They just entered the world quickly. And their fiery nature, even as a young child, they were really looking to grow, looking to learn, curious mind, very, very smart. That's what I see when the moon is in Marigashira, in Gemini. Now let's talk about if your moon sits between after six degrees, 40 minutes to 20 degrees of Gemini, sitting right smack dab in the middle of the sign, then your moon sits in the nakshatra called Ardra. And Ardra's symbol is a teardrop. It's also said to be a diamond, but it's actually called the moist one and that can deal with tears, but it can also deal with the storms, the rains that, that promote the growth on planet Earth. It's like we have to have the rains. We have to have the storms that will keep things alive. 
This is a very potent, potent nakshatra. It's ruled by Rahu. And this can represent extremes. This sharp, intense, very intense nakshatra can also deal with great sadness. Remember, Rudra is the storm god that rules Ardra. And it's like the dark, dark nights of the storms. The dark night of the soul is actually what this can depict. Because people with this nakshatra, especially the moon in Ardra, have suffered greatly. There has been major tears and sadness and sorrow in their lives. But great wisdom comes out of this. But they can be quite destructive. Now, another thing within this portion of the zodiac, we have Orion, where Betelgeuse sits. And those that have Betelgeuse conjunct their moon will have major ups and downs, but most of all be granted great honors. This is a very honorable um, star. And it's very intense, and it deals with great intelligence as well. But I have to say, when I think about Ardra, the whole mythology of how the stars, one leads to the other, after the storms, the darkness, the dark night of the soul and the darkness of the storms, guess what follows? The next nakshatra, which is Purnavasu, which means return of the light. This nakshatra is dealt, deals with major comebacks in life. But it's very much symbolic after the storms comes a sunny day. And that's what follows Ardra. So if your moon is in Gemini, but it sits from 20 degrees till the end of the sign, till 30 degrees, then your moon sits in Purnavasu. And Purnavasu's symbol is the quiver where the arrows from the bow and arrow sit. So it is the case. And what it symbolizes is the arrow that travels, goes around the world, but comes back to its home. This is what Purnavasu is about, coming back, coming back home, being at home, but the love of travel, but having to have your home base and always return. And Purnavasu people have major breakthroughs and changes that happen in their life. Because remember, it's the return of the like. I call this comebacks. After you reach your pits, you come back and be brighter than ever. Because this is the return of the light. People that have their moon in this nakshatra are very much, they're part, they are full of light. Yes, they're full of light, so they don't cast any shadows. They don't have mean intentions for others. There's a goodness within this nakshatra. Not that there's a badness in Ardra. Ardra has gone through the rough times, the emotions, and what comes out of it is a transformed person, an evolved person, but they have to go through the sorrow to get there. Purnavasu is ruled by Jupiter, and Jupiter is all aware and the teacher. Purnavasu, a moon in Gemini, and Purnavasu can be a teacher because Purnavasu is ruled by Jupiter. They love to teach, love to give information, they love opening their mind, and, and that's important learning. Learning for all three nakshatras are important because it sits in the sign of Gemini. But Purnavasu deals with, in that portion of the zodiac, is Castor and Pollux. And in Greek mythology, Castor was the mortal god, but Pollux was the immortal god. Castor was more, had more of a heart. You see, in Pollux, was heartless. So it depicts the meaning of humans, love and open-heartedness, especially if, if the moon is very close to 
the star Castor, but Castor and Pollux are very close. And of course they are the twins. Gemini, what is the symbol? The twins. And the twins really do represent that they can, they can convert to different ways of being. The mind moves so fast. They adjust. They change. They're adaptable. It's an air sign. Don't forget, Gemini is an air sign. And what is air all about? Communications. And connecting to other people. Actually, the air signs deal with, when we talk about the four aims of life, the Kama signs are the air signs, which are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And they deal with connecting to people. Gemini has to connect, has to communicate. They're the ones that lunge for the phone when it rings because they're the ones that keep on talking. It's the most communicative sign of all. Regardless if your moon sits in any of the three nakshatras, just by the fact it's in Gemini, you are a communicator. You love to talk. You love to communicate. But, but talking about Purnavasu, this actually can deal with being ruled by Jupiter that you start out life in such a positive note, the Jupiter Dasha. And of course, it depends on how Jupiter's placed. But for the most part, this will be very expansive, very positive, very uplifting individual entering into the world, entering into the Jupiter cycle. That's the imprint on your soul when you come in to be part of Jupiter cycle. So opportunities abound when you initiate and come into this world. So one last thing, remember Aditi is the god or goddess that rules Purnavasu and that's the god, goddess of abundance. Yes, the mother to the gods. So there's this, uh, this essence of abundance and giving back generosity that is attributed to this nakshatra called Purnavasu. And that means your moon must be in the last, what, 10 degrees of Gemini. So going over the whole moon in Gemini, this is a very open, communicative, jovial, funny, happy sign to have your moon in Gemini, you're always, always about learning and education and expanding consciousness awareness. Just be aware that sometimes you got to listen more than you speak. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to close. I hope you've gained some great insights into looking at those that may have their moon in the sign of Gemini. So with that, I'd like to close. If you would like more information on me, if you would like to get a reading or you would like to get my free newsletter, go to galacticcenter.org. And remember, if you want to learn Vedic astrology, here's the answer. Go to universityofvedicastrology.com and sign up. You'll be glad you did. Thank you.